Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night update. March 6, 2025 is a date, 9.47 p.m. That's California time here. Uh, latest activity on the Earthquake 3D globe. Make sure everything's turned off. Uh, shows a little small earthquake here across the uh, Northern California region, 0.7. Also, some movement uh, out in the Texas oil fields outside of Pecos, Texas. They're out in the desert. A lot of oil fields out here. And, of course, a lot of earthquake activity. Some movement outside of the OKC area as well throughout the uh, morning and afternoon. This, uh, well, let's take a look here at the satellite view. I know there's quite a few oil fields out here in Oklahoma as well. Uh, whether it's shown up here on the map, hard to say. Maybe some older ones out here, but uh, anyway, I mean, it's Oklahoma. They do get some earthquakes. Uh, the New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. Eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet as well. One lonesome earthquake outside of the Silver Gate. Well, that's, that's way south of Montana, but this is uh, outside of Yellowstone National Park there. A really small earthquake. I want to double check the uh, overview here. See what we have for the latest data. There we go. And, uh, yeah, not a lot of earthquake activity. There's the 6.1 that struck there in Chile earlier today. That earthquake showing up, not being felt, but showing up here on the sensitive equipment that monitors ground movement. That just goes to show you the ones that are uh, working properly. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity. There's that one earthquake noted on the map. But aside from that, uh, it's pretty quiet. Pretty quiet out there across the uh, Yellowstone area. So many maps open here. I need to <laughs> lower that. Uh, Seattle. What's going on up there in Seattle? Um, explosion out there outside of the uh, Victoria area. Not for sure what that's about. But uh, really no new earthquake activity to report there across that area of Washington. I know it's been quite active here recently. But uh, right now things look a little calm out there. Some earthquakes outside of the Mount Hood area. Nothing big going on. Northern California, roughly about the same. Uh, got one earthquake up here at Mount Lassen. That's a little odd. Don't see too, earth too much earthquake activity out there in Mount Lassen. Uh, that last erupted back in 1915, I believe, 1916, somewhere around that time frame. Fairly recent in terms of geology speaking. Uh, but I do want to double check the... Um, We'll go back to the trimmer here in a minute. I do want to check out the volcanoes for Mount Lassen and check out the seismograph station there. <clears throat> Everything's still green. No unusual activity, but uh, again, I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't really seen too much earthquake activity out there across Mount Lassen recently. So I just want to double check, make sure we don't have so, you know, some huge swarm going on. There is, uh, <clears throat> there's that one little earthquake little two-pointer now there's GPS where's our uh, where's our seismograph stations out there there's one seismograph station down there oh goodness it's not it doesn't look like it wants to open up properly um, this one open that one's not working not a whole lot up here I'm, I'm really surprised there's not a whole lot uh, more seismograph stations located up there, but I'm not seeing anything of abnormal activity out there on the maps. Just that one little lonesome earthquake showing up on the southwestern flank there of uh, Mount Lassen. Aside from that, pretty quiet there across Northern California. We'll double check the trimmer map here this evening, see what we got going on for Cascadia trimmer, which uh, shows about 32 epicenters of trimmer there across Southern Oregon. Nothing big. That is uh, pretty much due. Well, let me bring that map back here from the USGS. That trimmer activity uh, occurring up here. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity resulting, but uh, uh, let's see. There's one earthquake there this morning. It's been awfully quiet out there across the southern end of the Cascadia here in the last 24 hours. But that uh, looks like I spoke that too soon there. There's an earthquake coming in. To the Petrolia area, that's the seismograph station here located uh, south of Eureka. So it looks like there's an earthquake coming in. I don't know how big it is, but uh, we'll check back on that here in a minute. San Francisco, a couple smaller earthquakes just off the San Andreas Fault near Pacifica. 
beautiful area down there along the coast, but also very hazardous in terms of, well, seismic activity. Getting a cluster going on here across the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Um, yeah, not quite into the park field segment, just along the creeping segment. We could see things elevated here uh, following this type of movement. Nothing big, just some ones out there throughout the day today, so we'll keep an eye. Uh, maybe that's what's going on up here. Some later earthquake activity following the previous movement. So things are on the move here across the plate boundary. Southern California, not a whole lot happening out here. 2.5 model, well, that removes all the earthquakes off the map, and we're left with just a couple typical earthquakes there on any given day. On any given day out here, we normally see around 30 earthquakes or so across Southern California. Not felt. Um, these are way too small to be felt. A couple more earthquakes up here on that unnamed fault system uh, where that uh, Hollywood earthquake struck. Could be an older fault. It may be uh, reactivated here. Definitely watch that. Uh, let's see here. Worldwide activity. We'll check back here on that Petrolia earthquake here in a minute. It's still just coming in. Looks like it's just starting to refresh. Uh, New Zealand down here, latest earthquake of 4.5 outside of Wellington. Uh, quite a bit of activity here recently, but looks like starting to fade off as far as the intensity going on there. Pretty quiet up around the Fiji area for now. There's your crunch zone. This is the cluster zone, so to speak. A lot of earthquake activity here that happens on any given day. That's not unusual. That That's just what happens there. <laughs> That's the, uh, that's, uh, like I say, it's not the official name, but I like to call it the Crunch Zone. A lot of earthquake activity out there. Japan, pretty quiet. Uh, a couple of earthquakes here around the, let's see where that's at. Up outside the uh, Caspian Sea, 4.3. Nothing big going on out there for now. I don't think Santorini's having any major uptick. Some earthquake activity around Italy here, 3.2. Santorini area looks like it's, uh... Yeah, it looks like it has been here the last couple of days. No major uptick to note there across the area. We'll give a quick glance, so just just a double check. 477 earthquakes here in the last week. Got the uh, last couple ones here in the one range. Nothing big, no unusual uptick. It's just still seen about 80 earthquakes or so a day. Uh, largest magnitude, of course, going to be that six-pointer down here. Across the um, Chile area, 58 miles deep there into that Peru-Chile Trench major subduction zone. Um, a number of aftershocks, although the majority of those, if you look on the globe, there's some deeper ones there in that area. So this region may see some further adjustment. Uh, 6.1 is a minimal earthquake compared to what it can produce out here. All right, uh, quick glance here at space weather activity. Just going to try and keep this really short. Look at that. Way down into the B flare category. How about that? Not a whole lot going on out there on the sun, folks, as I've been forecasting. 1% uh, or less for X flare. These guys still have it at 10, but that's Kevin's sight. He may not have time to be adjusting these. Um, M flare at 45. That's probably reasonable there's not a whole lot of uh complex sunspots out here we'll double check and wait for the uh, latest one to pop up <clears throat> as far as the magnetogram image this is the area i've been kind of watching latest imagery uh, it already looks weaker here as soon as it loads from the uh, uh noaa site the sdo nasa site excuse me yeah, look at that. Clear-cut separation here of the core. Not really expecting much from that sunspot at all. Uh, there's a little bit of activity down southwest of that big sunspot, but uh, I don't know. really doesn't look all that impressive either. Back here across the eastern limb, there is a newer area peaking around the eastern limb. Uh, we'll have to watch that in the coming days. Maybe that may enhance the solar flare potential. Maybe not. We'll have to watch it. No major roars there in the forecast for now, folks. Uh, quick glance at the numerical model here for weather outlook. California, got a lot of rain coming in here. Southern California as well. That's just the first in the series of storms. It looks like that first one coming up here 
Monday into Tuesday of this coming week, mainly aimed at Southern California. But back behind that, uh, a decent storm system there aimed at uh, Northern California there for Wednesday and Thursday. Back behind that, uh, oh, clears up a little bit for the West Coast. Uh, maybe some severe weather out here. Uh, that would be the 16th time period. I don't know what to watch. That's a ways out there, though. Uh, far as the uh, Climate Prediction Center and um, the forecast goes, where'd all my where'd my Climate Prediction Center go? There it is. Far as the uh, near term, six to ten day outlook. Look at that. Look at uh, California and yeah, the West Coast. A lot of precipitation coming in, aimed at uh, the West Coast. Below normal temperatures. California, uh, Texas, looking at some drought conditions, maybe uh, slipping in. That's for the 6 to 10 day. 8 to 14 day remains dry out in Texas and Oklahoma area. Um, wet out here across the west and below normal. So that's, uh, that is it. Interesting uh, spring. So, well, it's early spring. Just very early spring. We'll have to see what happens here. Um, let's go check out the earthquake, see what that was. Oh, it's just a little small spike of an earthquake. Um probably thinking they're not going to show it earthquakes updated yeah it's it's not even showing up on the map but it is an earthquake uh my best guess is probably a maybe a 1.2 1.3 or so around this area but uh they uh, the reporting for the one pointers anything below two pointer out here they uh, it just doesn't get reported so but there's a little bit of earthquake activity out there nothing big all right, uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. Just going to call it a night. Somewhat of an early night. Well, it's 10 o'clock here. Not really early. I'm just tired. I I, uh, I bought a new fan here, a bladeless fan. And I'll tell you why. I actually have probably five or six fans here. And I'm one of those people that has to have a fan on me during the middle of the night, you know, when I'm sleeping, whether it's 20 degrees out or whether it's, you know, 100 degrees out. It, it's something I have to have. It's I, it's mandatory. I have it on. Um, now, lately, I don't know what it is, but my brain at night, I've been for whatever reason, listening for high pitched sounds in the fan and it wakes me up wide awake. And, uh, man, I cannot stop thinking about a high pitched whiny noise when I lay down. So I've gone through several fans thinking that, uh, um, you know, it's a fan itself and some fans do make a little whine, really high pitch. My hearing is perfect. Um, you know, I don't shoot guns or anything like that, so it's not really, I don't subject my ears to loud noises. But uh, lately, in the last week, I haven't been sleeping all that good at night. Just, I'll hear a whiny noise through the fan, and I'll try to ignore it, but uh, I find it wakes me up in the middle of the night, and I cannot go back to sleep. So I just bought this new one. Um, it's a bladeless one, and we'll see how it works tonight. I'm hoping it doesn't do give the same results as these other fans. So I, I have like three tower fans, a couple other other standing fans, and man, <laughs> if you need a fan, let me know. So it just looks weird to have all these fans here in the bedroom, and I'm sure we'll put them to use in the summertime. It's good to have some air movement, but I don't for whatever reason that my brain picks out the high frequency. I don't know if anyone's got any advice on how to ignore that. I haven't tried earplugs, um, but when I hear it, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> it's so annoying. I don't know if anyone knows exactly what I'm talking about, but that's, oh, man, it's so irritating. So past couple nights, I've been lucky if I've gotten a few hours of sleep, maybe that, three hours. So just let me know in the comments uh, here on this video. I'll, I'll be looking for that. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. There's got to be some type of remedies. Um the, the option of sleeping with no fan, though, is not uh, an option for me. It just, it's just not possible. There's no way I could sleep with no fan. I've made the mistake of not bringing a fan with me when I travel out here through Texas and Oklahoma during storm season. End up at the motels. Some motels have some nice fans. Um, some have no fans. Uh, but I made the mistake before of not bringing a fan with me. 
sleep at a nice motel and I have no fan to go to sleep to. It's a really frust frustrating night. But uh, anyway, all right, folks, have a good one. Keep an eye, uh, you know, it's hard to say to keep an eye on, on Watt out here right now. It's a little a little quiet since that uh, six-pointer down there in Chile. Not a whole lot of elevated activity right now, aside from the typical region here, but uh, we'll see what happens here through the night. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning for the Friday morning update. Stay safe out there, folks. Have a good night.